For 25 years, we have been Indiana's business news leader. This is IBJ Media's Inside Indiana Business with Gary Dick. Presented by Elevate Ventures and Indiana University. Indiana's sizzling tech scene. 16 Tech with robust growth plans, innovation hubs in Bloomington and Terre Haute, and plans in the works for a new tech corridor. We'll look at what it all means for the state's economy. Plus, an Indiana medical device company produces the perfect recipe for a struggling neighborhood. Fresh food, the business story behind this new grocery store and what it means for the community. And Journeyman planting its roots in Indiana where the popular distillery is preparing to set up shop and the economic ripple effect. Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick, coming to you this week from the 16 Tech Innovation District on the near northwest side of Indianapolis, an ambitious talent attraction project that has been decades in the making. Specifically, we are inside Machine, which is a, a maker space, really an all-encompassing maker space, providing all the resources, the assets, the machines necessary for innovators and entrepreneurs of all sizes to do prototypes. We're going to get an example uh, of one such uh, prototype here, vacuum forming uh, technology here that is used by a number of entrepreneurs and innovators. There are some 90 members to machine, a growing number here at 16 Tech, and there's a finished product. An Inside Indiana Business logo using that vacuum forming technology, and Paul, thanks for doing that. Give us an example of just some of the technology uh, available here at Machine. Machine is part of 16 Tech, which is a 50-acre uh, innovation site, part of a growing network of innovation districts around the state of Indiana. We saw news this week of a planned innovation district in Terre Haute. Later in the show, we'll tell you about big news and a milestone at the mill in Bloomington. That's part of the Trades District, and how that could be part of an emerging technology corridor beginning at the Crane Naval Surface Warfare Center and uh, coming through Bloomington, 16 Tech, and on up to West Lafayette as well. But first, major developments here at 16 Tech. Pre-leasing has begun on two new buildings planned here near West 16th Street and Indiana Avenue. One is a 100,000 square foot laboratory building. The other an office building catering to sports and health-focused tenants. Work has also started on the first residential property in the district, Vanguard at 16 Tech, 285 multifamily units, 1,900 square feet of retail space as well. And joining me now with details on those developments, a multitude of developments here at 16 Tech, pleased to be joined by 16 Tech CEO Emily Kruger. And uh, Emily, thanks for taking the time. You're welcome. Uh, amazing complex here as we've gone through. Want to go through some of these developments, though, the residential piece. Uh, that's especially important, I know, to the overall development of an innovation space. Talk about why it's so important to get this residential piece off and running. Sure. Well, keep in mind that 16 Tech was created really to address two problems. One, the lack of innovation-driven enterprises that were forming and scaling in Indianapolis. And two, also a need to attract and retain talent. And so residential is part of what is a key ingredient in making a 24-7 environment. And that 24-7 environment is ultimately essential to fostering an overall innovation ecosystem. One of the other key pieces of that is also the AMP Food Hall, where we've got plenty of options for local food and drink for not just the companies that locate here, but for also those who are interested in getting to know about 16 Tech and for the neighbors who are closest to us. Another piece of that 24-7 environment is, is the bridge, that iconic bridge that construction has started to connect 16 Tech to the IU Med Center and uh, IU Indiana University and Purdue University Indianapolis. Uh, how's that going? Well, we're excited about the bridge construction and most importantly about the physical connectivity that it's going to facilitate between the hospitals and the research facilities that are immediately to our south, IU Indianapolis and Purdue in Indianapolis. The land that 16 Tech is developing is historically and still today the site of the city's water infrastructure. Many people are not aware of this place and the bridge creates um, that physical connection which will help draw people to the district. Most importantly, 16 Tech is sitting at the confluence of a lot of trails in our city. The Indianapolis Cultural Trail, uh, the White River Trail, the Riverside Promenade. And so all of these things are going to come together and the bridge also provides a key 
asset to the regional connectivity. How important, I mentioned two new buildings, uh, began pre-leasing, mm -hmm. uh, one with a new lab space, another focused on, on health, health and sports medicine. Talk about those new, two new buildings that uh, may be coming out of the ground before too long. That's right. We have more than 300,000 square feet of wet and dry lab enabled space that's in our development pipeline. And part of our focus is helping um, the historical industries of our state, life sciences and advanced manufacturing and the tech adoption of those industries. So unlike a traditional office park, a lot of the resources that are here in 16 Tech are ones that are intended to make it as easy as possible for people to develop physical products. And even in a remote and hybrid work environment, there are still times that people need to come together, whether that be in a lab or whether it be to prototype and fabricate a product. What's really neat is that because um, so much has changed in terms of product development right now, we can concentrate some of these resources to make it easier and less capital intensive for companies who are looking to create physical products. And so these two buildings that we have will bring additional wet lab space to the market, particularly something that's called graduation space. So when a company reaches a size and stage that it needs dedicated space, but a turnkey solution, we're gonna bring that to 16 Tech. And then we're also really excited about the confluence that exists between sports and health in our city. And 16 Tech is a great place to bring that together. And we've got some really exciting prospects for a facility that will um, uh, support uh, health and sports tech as well. A lot of things coming together as you look at innovation and entrepreneurship in Indiana. As you look bigger picture, we're going to have something a little bit later in the show on a big milestone at the mill in Bloomington and in the trades district there. This vision that people are talking about, an 84-mile SciTech corridor stretching from Crane through Bloomington here to 16 Tech. Mm -hmm. Well, and it also um, is a corridor that stretches up to West Lafayette as well. So collectively, these things show the depth of innovation assets that exist across our state. And all of us who are um, involved in these spaces are working hard to align them so that way for those who are interested in doing business in Indiana, they recognize that there are a variety of resources. And when they come and they locate, whether it's at 16 Tech or whether it's at the Mill or whether it be in the Leap District, they're supported by a broader ecosystem that can help them with the different resources they might need at different stages of growth. Emily Kruger is the CEO of 16 Tech. Emily, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. To the latest now on the UAW strike against the big three, but we're putting an asterisk on our reporting on this due to the fact that things may change very fluid between now and when we recorded our show late in the week. The walkout continues to have a ripple effect in Indiana. GM announcing 160 workers being laid off at plants in Indiana and Ohio, more than 30 of those at GM's metal stamping center in Marion. Last month, Stellantis furloughed about 300 workers at two of its facilities in Kokomo. How you doing? Coming up next, how access to fresh food and good paying jobs is transforming an inner city Indianapolis neighborhood and the Indiana Medical Device Company behind it all. You know, these are communities that have seen, they're predominantly black communities, that have seen opportunity leave over the last 40 years. How can we be a part of that solution? How can we do differently? Back at 16 Tech now, where work is continuing on a new residential complex at this innovation district. Well, you just heard from an Indiana business answering the bell to lift forgotten communities. Cook Medical President Pete Yonkman on the Business and Beyond podcast talking about the company's decision to invest in an inner city Indianapolis neighborhood where jobs and fresh food were once hard to come by. You know, medical device makers uh, typically aren't in the business of building grocery stores, but there is a unique project uh, that is just completed on the near northeast side of Indianapolis. Let's go to Business of Health reporter Kylie Valletta now at 38th and Sherman with more on the story. Kylie. Thanks, Gary. Bloomington-based Cook Medical wanted to breathe new life into this neighborhood, so the company did something it's never done before. It built its newest manufacturing operation, this facility right here behind me, in a struggling neighborhood. Well, the residents soon told Cook they weren't just hungry for good jobs, but also for healthy food, so Cook built a grocery store. 
Indy Fresh Market is now open. Thank you, thank you so much. Part of the Cook legacy in Indiana is its philosophy that you can do good business and also do good. And for this predominantly black neighborhood on Indy's near northeast side, that comes in the form of a grocery store in what was previously a food desert. For our areas, since it's been overlooked for so long, it's just showing, yes, we can do some positive things within our backyard. It was a bold move for Cook to build the manufacturing facility in the neighborhood, which faced some of the highest levels of unemployment and poverty in the state. And now, just steps away, the Indy Fresh Market is open. Cook donated the land and built the structure after neighbors voiced their need for a place to buy groceries. It gives them the opportunity to eat, feed the children, children can eat, children can work. We got employment for the uh, high school children. It's just a great, it's a great moment for the community. A key part of the project is that Cook will gradually transfer ownership of the grocery store to Marcus Williams and Michael McFarland who previously ran a small corner convenience store nearby. It's like going from the minor leagues to the major leagues, from junior varsity to varsity. You know, it's a big step, a lot of learning curves, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, you know. The local entrepreneurs will learn the ins and outs of running a full-service grocery store as co-managers, and Cook will make them co-owners in a few years. If we put up the upfront capital, how can that help with generational wealth? And that's exactly what this store is going to do. Cook is hopeful this fresh idea to lift up a community by partnering with locals will be a model as other corporations consider how to impact the neighborhoods where they do business. It's just so amazing and my mind right now is like how do we keep this going long term? And part of Cook's vision for this project is that it would have a snowball effect in the neighborhood and that's certainly happening. Right next door to the grocery store, construction is underway on a new Eskenazi Health Center. Also on tap, a bank and new housing, 400 single-family units nearby. Gary, back to you. Well, just a few miles from us here at 16 Tech, uh, big plans underway at Gainbridge Fieldhouse to host another major sporting event. The best in basketball coming to Indianapolis in February for the NBA All-Star Weekend. One, two, three. It's open. Gamebridge Fieldhouse ready to host that event, all spipped up and ready to go after a $400 million renovation, both inside and out. In this week's Business and Beyond podcast, we uh, got the lowdown from Pacers Sports and Entertainment President Mel Raines on what sets Indianapolis apart when it comes to putting on a big show. Everybody is just frankly in it for the right reason. And part of that is we don't have the ocean and we don't have the mountains and those things. So we've got to, we're, we, we've got to be better than everybody else, but it's also because we take pride in being better than everybody else. And some cities dial it in and we just don't do that. Much more with Mel Raines, a key player in driving Indianapolis forward as a sports tourism destination. She's my guest on this week's Business and Beyond podcast. Well, whiskey pumping new life into an old windshield wiper factory in Northwest Indiana. Find out what's on tap for Journeyman Whiskey when we come back. A glamorous anchor of commerce and entertainment for Indiana Avenue's black patrons and talents. It was another sign that the Avenue was the place to go for blacks in Indianapolis. And find out what's next for this historic, iconic district in Indianapolis in this week's IBJ. Here's what's making news around Indiana, brought to you by the Indiana Association of Realtors, Indiana's 21,000 realtors, the neighbors you know, the experts you can count on. Whiskey replacing windshield wipers in Northwest Indiana. Mary Rachel Redmond has more on that story and much more news from around Indiana. She's back in studio now, Mary Rachel. Well, that's right, Gary. A major project underway in the region. Michigan-based Journeyman Distillery preparing to open its second location about 40 miles west in Valparaiso, Indiana. The $40 million project could become a big economic draw for the Porter County City. The campus sits on the former Anco windshield wiper factory in Valpo and will feature a distillery, brewery, and restaurants. <laughs> The train's about to leave the station in northwest Indiana. 
and it's a huge deal for Hoosier commuters and businesses. Successful testing of the new double track project could mean riders will be able to hop on board the first stretch of track in less than two weeks. A lot of big news and notable investments in Indiana colleges and universities this week, beginning with a major milestone for DePauw University in Greencastle. The school launching its new school of business this week. DePauw now the only top 50 liberal arts university in the Midwest with a business school. Rose Holman Institute of Technology in Terre Haute making big investments on two fronts. The school breaking ground on a new $30 million residence hall. The first time in more than 60 years, first year Rose Holman students will have a new dorm to live in. And Rose Holman also stamping its mark on Indiana's tech scene. The university planning to relocate its ventures program closer to campus, which includes building a new facility that will be the catalyst for a proposed new innovation district. We really are trying to create um, a Rose Holman version of an innovation park um, focused on innovation, entrepreneurship, and discovery. And just down the road in Terre Haute, Indiana State President Deborah Curtis announcing her retirement. Curtis will remain with the Sycamores through the end of the current 2024 school year. Purdue Northwest getting into the crime-fighting business. The university partnering with the Lake County Prosecutor's Office to create a new crime lab unit on campus. It will be used to investigate crimes committed on digital devices. A new lease on life for what is believed to be South Bend's very first office building. The city selling the historic Lafayette building to a group that intends to renovate it. Plans call for ground floor retail and apartments. This is a, a historic building that is not yet at the place where it is unsalvageable, right? Uh, it's, a, it's an important building in downtown's history. It's important uh, from an architectural standpoint. You've probably seen us snacks in the chip aisle at the grocery store, some of them made right here in Indiana. But change is ahead for the company. Utz closing its oldest plant in Pennsylvania and selling the one in Bluffton in Wells County. The Indiana facility, which manufactures some of Utz's kennel brands, will be a part of Super Puffed Snacks USA. Big numbers on the value of having three ports in the state. The Ports of Indiana releasing a new survey showing the ports generate more than $8.5 million a year for the economy and support nearly 50,000 jobs. And Wally is heading to Whitestown. The IBJ reporting the Missouri-based company planning to build one of its large travel centers in Boone County. It's a $30 million project that will feature a huge store, 80 gas pumps, and as many as 20 charging stations. All right, Mary Rachel, thank you. Well, coming up next, a new tech hub in Bloomington could help spark regional growth from Cray Naval Surface Warfare Center to Indianapolis and beyond. More on the impact of Monroe County's new trades district when we come back. And a reminder to join IBJ at the Indiana Roof Ballroom on Thursday, October 19, to celebrate Central Indiana's most influential women at our annual Women of Influence event. RSVP by October 13th at IBJ.com slash events. I think people in Indy kind of know what they're capable of and are kind of tired of the 30, 40 year old narrative that it's a you know, it's a cheap place to live and a nice place to raise a family. Well, Indiana status on the tech scene, much more than a dot on the map in the eyes of Indianapolis tech pioneer Christian Anderson, the High Alpha co-founder and partner sounding off on innovation growth on a recent Business and Beyond podcast. Back at 16 Tech Now, inside Studio 4, where Rogue AI is developing technology for precision agriculture. This gives you a good idea of the innovation going on here. This is a 700-pound drone uh, used to spray farm fields. You know, technology and innovation uh, like this is also cropping up, not just here in central Indiana, but in south central Indiana as well. There's talk of a burgeoning corridor, a sci-tech corridor between Cray Naval Surface Warfare Center, Bloomington, Indianapolis, and West Lafayette. A vision that once seemed more like a pipe dream, now becoming more like reality. The Trades District, 12 acres of land in downtown Bloomington, part of the city's certified technology park that over the past decade has been transformed into a hub for innovation and entrepreneurship. The centerpiece is the mill. It opened five years ago and has grown into Southern Indiana's largest co-working space with nearly 400 members and home to more than 60 companies. 
ultimately what we want to do is focus as much as we possibly can on founders, helping create a really founder-friendly environment here, helping them launch their startup, accelerate their startup, um, come up and conceive with ideas for a startup. Um, whatever they need to do, we want to offer programming around that, whether it's pitch competitions, recruiting remote workers, so there's more talent coming into Bloomington, whether it's a code school, so we have more folks from them to hire so they can actually build their companies. We want to do as much as we can to kind of uh, fulfill uh, that mission and vision, which has really been our mission and vision since day one. And that vision continues to expand. This week, ground broken adjacent to the mill on an $8.5 million technology center, a 22,000 square foot addition that is also expected to attract housing and entertainment options to the district. If you uh, look at uh, the Bottle Works district in Indianapolis, that's 12 acres in downtown Indianapolis. We want to create that same look and feel and vibe and brand here in Bloomington. Um, and so this is really kind of the, the next big domino um, in, in Bloomington, specifically in the trades district. We've got the, the mill acting as, a, uh, as an anchor here, as a model for what, what other buildings uh, could look like, how much activity we can have. The tech center is viewed as a key piece of a SciTech corridor extending from the Crane Naval Surface Warfare Center, the world's third largest naval warfare base, through Bloomington, Indianapolis, and West Lafayette. Right now, it's just a vision, just like uh, the mill was just a vision five years ago, uh, but with a lot of hard work and, and intentional thought and effort and talking to the right people and forming the right, right relationships, which we've been able to build here at the mill over the last five years, we're, we're really confident that we can uh, turn this vision into reality. So a lot of excitement being generated in South Central Indiana as well. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Inside Indiana Business. We hope you've enjoyed this inside look at 16 Tech here in Indianapolis uh, and an overview of innovation and technology going on around the state of Indiana. I'm Gary Dick. Thanks for joining us. Go out and make it a successful week.